Hello and welcome to another FS Derek video. Um, this time I'm going to be doing a review and some gameplay on X-Plane 10. Now why X-Plane 10? Well, um, Flight Simulator as you know split into a retail and a sort of a commercial version. The retail version was picked up by Dovetail Games, the same people who do the train simulator. And they're releasing lots of content for it but not really um, putting a tremendous amount of investment in into upgrading the um, the core code um, in the same way as everyone's waiting for their their train simulator core to be upgraded with the Unreal Engine and uh, but but all they they do is just carry on releasing uh, train carriages and steam engines and things and the the sort of the development branch of Flight Simulator got sold to Lockheed Martin who brought it out under the brand name Prepared with a 3 instead of an E, very clever and they have carried on developing it but every few years they charge you about um, £200 to buy it again which is, I, I think it's a bit of a cheek there's no upgrade they've just bought out I think version 3 and if you had version, if you spent $200 on version 2 you've got to spend another $200 on version 3 and $400 is just far more than I'd be prepared to spend on a flight simulator is far more than you need to. So um, if you don't want to spend that sort of money you've got two choices. If you like civil aviation then there's X-Plane. If you like uh, fighters and blowing things up then you've got DCS World and both are excellent. Both are really excellent. Um, and what I'm going to do is just show you a few features of X-Plane with a view to sort of helping you easing you into the transition uh, if you're a lifelong FSX or flight simulator player as I am right away from the days when they used to uh, hand, you know, sell them on five and a quarter inch floppies and uh, we were all amazed when they brought out the Hawaii as the first standalone scenery uh, you know, until then we've been, been restricted to flying around the Chicago area in the days when the uh, the land was green and the towns were yellow. But um, anyway, here we are, we're in a plane. Now, again, I'm going to have to apologise slightly because this is not a bog standard plane. This is a um, a King Air B2200 and this is a payware plane. Um, and they're not cheap, the X planes. They're 25 to 30 pounds, probably the good ones. Um, this is one of the better GA aircraft, um, and as you can see, it's sort of it's very well appointed. First of all, I would say normally I would fly with a Track IR Pro, but you can't really do that with this, in my opinion, because there is so much um, jiggling about with the head motion, and these co these um, controls are so sensitive that. Um, you can't really control them properly and, and it's not very good for a YouTube video anyway to have the display flying about all over the place. I'm on the ground at South End, and I'm going to just do a quick trip across to Amsterdam. I haven't planned anything because really this is only like a demonstration so if we get lost we get lost. But um, just to show you how easy it is to set these, um, these scenarios up, let's go to the menu bar at the top here and we'll go to location and we'll go to local, uh, well, select global airport. And here we're going to type in South End. And here is uh, South End, Echo Golf, Mike Charlie. And we've got a little map of it. And we can either start on the main apron or we can start as I'm going to start on runway 24. And that's it. Uh, now, if you're used to flight simulator, you'll you'll wonder whether that's happened or not. But in fact, it has. <laughs> it's just instant, and that's because again, this is a 64-bit uh, flight simulator and not 32-bit, uh, which is what flight simulator is. And it's very responsive, very quick. Uh, just to give you another demonstration of that, if we go to environment and date and time 
and just put the time forward to this evening um, there we are instant um, let's put that back because I really want to see the um, have the light fly in the daytime so let's do a mid-morning flight um, and and also the weather uh, the environment if you go do the weather it's got you know quite a nice weather engine you can set the weather uniformly for the whole world which is what I've done or you can set it in a semi random basis based on these parameters on whether you want it to be uh, how intense storminess for example you want and temperature and uh, how random or you can do something which I think is is so cool which is if I just clear the weather there I can paint the weather so for example supposing I want to um, paint some weather I'm just holding down the left mouse button here and it's put some clouds around south end and you can do it again put some more clouds around and put, around, put some more clouds around and it will build up the clouds <coughs> but then once we get over Mike Hotel which is the old designation for Manston or HB Hotel Bravo which is the old designation for Maypole Airfield at Herne Bay um, we should find that the weather clears up so let's do that and also of course you've got the um, grab the world weather from the net so it's as you can see again pretty instant um, I haven't really got the time or the inclination to go into the uh, air traffic control but suffice to say it has got air traffic control what I've done is I've put up a small window here just to show me the wind direction and speed um, which is basically from the north um, we're taking off on 2-4 so um, we're going to have let's have a look 2-4 that's west 30 so we have a bit of a tailwind which is um, probably a bit of a shame um, it's got pop-up boxes on all the instruments which is great for anyone who's a sort of um, training um, you don't have to have those on if you go to about instructions you can show all the mouse click regions in the cockpit if you want to and, and show the instrument instructions as well which I'll just turn that off and also when you turn it on if there's um, air traffic control shouting at you all the time then uh, you can turn that off by, and it says it here, uh, go to the set sound option in the settings menu to select the ATC audio output. And one of the most annoying things when you turn it on is you have air traffic control shouting at you the whole time. You, first thing you want to do is turn it off, so that's how you do it. You go to, you go to settings and you go to sound, and then uh, you, can, you can choose whether to have just text-based or verbal air traffic control. So, anyway, let's get off the ground. Um, what I want to do is, I'm going to, let's say, we'll choose um, 10,000 feet as a cruising altitude. Now, it would be so lovely if you could just roll the wheel up, wouldn't it, and change that. And look, you can. Isn't that great? Just rolling the scroll, the, the wheel on the mouse forwards and I'll set that 10,000 feet so we don't have to waste any oxygen the autopilot is actually down here and again look that goes out of the way here's the autopilot now what you can do is you can by moving the scroll wheel forwards zoom right in on that and set that yourself and perhaps we'll do that later Let's just show, put the yaw damper on just to show you that it does work the other way of doing it is to click on one of these things down here in which case it then comes up in the cockpit so you can uh, handle the autopilot without having to um, zoom in down here now the other really good idea and I think they've borrowed a bit from a flight simulator add-on is that if you like this view you can save it so by pressing one of the keys on the number pad onto the right of the keyboard plus control so I'll press control 3 because that's on the bottom right and that's actually memorized that now now the front and center view is W so if I press W that'll take me back to the front and center view and if I press now not control 3 but just 3 on the keypad it'll take me down to that view and if I press 3 again it'll take me back so let's just to show you again supposing I prefer that view rather than the the, the, the windowed view 
what I'll do, I'll press control 7 to store that and then I'll press 3 which will take me down and then 7 which will take me back or 3 which will take me down and 3 which will take me back so you can set up a number of views to to suit yourself you know depending on what you want to do so supposing you want to um, uh, work the radios then set that one up as control 6 and then now you've got the autopilot you've got the radios and you've got 7 your front and centre view so as I said, let's take off. Let's um, we'll cruise at ten thousand feet. What we want to do is head off to Amsterdam. I'm going to guess it's going to it's about zero eight zero. So I'm going to change the heading indicator. Now this time, when you use the scroll wheel, it's zooming in and out. So what you have to do is left click and drag. So if you can see by left clicking and dragging, that is that's moving the heading bug down here so when we take off we're going to want to click heading and altitude so let's put it away and uh, just uh, take off now the external views are not that I think they're shift 1 that's it shift 1 shift 2 shift 3 shift 4 shift 5 etc uh, 6 7 that's the uh, internal view 9 0 so shift 4 is the one you're probably going to use the most now when I've, I've got the keys to move the view mapped to my hat on the joystick I'm using a sidewinder too so it's got a hat so if I move that up and down the view moves up and down and left and right so that's jolly good in the cockpit, but it's not as much use outdoors. So outdoors, you just use the, the straightforward arrow keys. So arrow up, arrow down, arrow left, arrow right. And that is in lieu of the, is the sort of the forward left, forward right, left, right, etc. So <clears throat> just having a quick look, make sure that nothing's coming. So I'm going to go press 7, go straight back inside the cockpit and uh, I'll uh, skip all the normal checks and what we're looking at here is the torque so down here is the uh, parking brake so if I click the brake which I've got mapped to key 1 on the joystick which is basically the, the trigger <coughs> that pops the parking brake off and we can now oh, let's just keep it straight Keep the torque nice and high, and off we go. Now you can map the gear to the joystick buttons, but if you just press gear, that will go up anyway. So that's the gear stove. Seven on the keypad. Keep the nose down because we want to climb at about the top of the white line, which is about 155. And we're going to be turning left. So we've got no flaps. So we don't need to worry about uh, making sure we don't rip the flaps off. There is a, a setting in here which means that you will lose control surfaces, surfaces if if you do over speed so um, and you can set that to um, punish you if you like you know if you go uh, e exceed the landing gear VLE the v maximum speed with landing gear extended VLE if you exceed that then you'll lose the landing gear or bits of it and it's the same with the flaps if you exceed the, ma the maximum flaps extended speed which is VFE then you'll lose bits of the flaps and it's your own fault. <laughs> now, um, what I'm going to do, let's just engage the autopilot then. So, autopilot on, heading and altitude, put the yaw damper on, and engage the autopilot. And we're going to want to climb. We're, we're climbing. So, let's have a look. 
There we are. And it's climbing at the moment at 800 feet a minute, and you can increase that by clicking this. So we'll, we'll tell it to. We'll put it in a fairly aggressive climb, 1600 feet a minute, and then it, and it should go up to. Uh, well, I think what I did was I reset the um, altimeter. I reset the target altitude. Let's do another climb. There we go. Just probably pressed everything in the wrong order. <coughs> what I like to uh, point out to you is the lovely clouds, which on next plane come as standard. You don't have to buy a lot of expensive T Rex add ons, whatever they're called, and the clouds are pretty impressive. And I'm not running a high-end graphics um, card, just in case you're thinking I am. It's only a NVIDIA GeForce 560, I think. I mean, a 560, you know, not not a even an 800 or a 900 series. Uh, yeah, so the clouds, I'm pretty impressed with the clouds. Actually, I mean, you know, if you're pushed for time, I'll tell you I'm pretty impressed with the whole thing now. Anyway. So that's climbing about 1600 feet a minute, <coughs> which is nice for making 200 knots. The um, torque has dropped back a bit. Everything that um, you're used to on FSX, you've pretty well got on here. It has got a large number of quite nice aircraft. It's got your 737s and your A319s. It comes with a with a with a bunch of aircraft. Well, let me show you. Open aircraft. So there, the Baron. The Baron's a nice aircraft. It's got a, a Vigan and uh, I think it's either the Phantom or the Raptor that that have got tail hooks for landing on uh, carriers. It's got Cessnas for beginners, and it's got everything. It's got uh, helicopters, and it's even got a space shuttle, and the and the X plane, which of course is the original one. Um, what it was all about. Now, uh, again, you see, with X plane, it, it is pretty rock solid. So, with with, you know, if I was off on a f flight, um, in FS in FSX. Uh, and things are going well. You wouldn't do that, would you? You wouldn't open a load of menus and start clicking about. Stop clicking about. <laughs> you wouldn't dare do it. But in X Plane, you sort of can, you know. You sort of, you sort of don't care. Uh, what else can I show you? I mean, there's a, there's a ton of stuff um, here, which is technical. And so you don't really need to worry about that. So, for example, if you wanted to show the, um, let's see if I can. I think it might be. I don't know. I'm not going to do it because I'm not. I don't even know what I'm doing. But basically, what you can do is you can cause the. I think it's the flight model. That's it. The flight model. Oh, it must be in trimmed level unaccelerated flight, understood. Oh well, it's probably not. But there we've got um, the forces on the plane. You can see the forces on the propellers pulling it forwards. And the green forces are the lift on the wings. And the red, um, the red forces are the, the drag, and this is all being worked out in in real time. And this is again, these are all the data points surrounding the model that are being used to calculate. It. There's three of those, and then if you press Control M again, you're back where you were. 
We're fine. We're still climbing at 1,600 feet a minute, which is good, because we're not in the white arc. You'd only need to really worry if you're in the white arc if you're climbing. Uh, or if you're flying along it. It's got a ceiling of about 24,000 feet on it, this plane. It's a Carinado plane. The documentation's a bit um, sparse, because it does say, you know, like for example, on the on the uh, GPS unit, it says, you know, if you want to know anything about it, go on the Garmin website. It's a Garmin 430, I think. That beep tells us that we're um, coming up on the target altitude, and uh, probably in the UK, we'd we'd have. I'm just going to roll scroll forward on the scroll wheel and, and set the QF, the QNH at uh, 1013 millibars or 29.91 inches of mercury because I think above um, 3,000 feet in the UK you'd be flying on the standard pressure and the speeds, you know, we can, we can put the torque up because the torque's changed a bit and then I'll I'll thicken up the props a bit because um, thickening up the props is a bit like changing up gear. We're, we've been in first gear so far because we've been climbing, so the engine's working quite hard. But now we're flying along. We're um, we're um, we can afford to change up a gear. So you know, and you do that by pressing F3, and that brings the props back. So. Um, This is the prop speed, and you'll notice that the prop speed will drop because every time the prop goes around, it's taking a bigger bite of air. And what happens is the engine carries on putting exactly the same amount of effort into it, and that's because it's it's far more efficient to have the engine running efficiently, and the props being the variable rather than the engine being the variable. Because you can imagine, when you're cruising along, the engine will produce the maximum power at certain RPM, and you don't want to change that. Even if you slow down or speed up, you don't want to change the speed of the engine. So what happens is the prop angle mediates that. Anyway, let's not get too uh, complicated. So how are we doing? Now, um, Amsterdam isn't very far away. And uh, almost as soon as you get up, You've got to go up till you up top. You've got to go down till you downtown to um, Amsterdam. So, we need to find it, don't we? And what you can do, you can either zoom in on your, um, on your things here, and we want to go to di direct and you've got a small cursor there which will start entering whatever it is you want to find and the big the big cursor on the outside moves you along one so now it will be great if Amsterdam was EDAM wouldn't it EDAM but it isn't I think it's EHAM or something so how are we going to find out let me just look it up internet but it gone off. Skip hole I C A O code E Ham Oh I knew it was close. Okay. Not E Dam. E Ham Now You see how the weather's cleared? That's good, isn't it? And you see how I've <laughs> all tabbed out of the out of the uh, simulator, and it didn't crash. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so I'll show you another neat trick, which is not unique to explain. But if you want to, you can just pull these out. So we wanted e ham, didn't we? So 
that is. Do that and then A, that's fine. And then L, M. And then press Enter. And then activate. And it's telling us it's uh, 124 nautical miles away on a track of 67 degrees. So let's click on that and put that back. And let's just zoom in on this. And at the moment it's set to 81, so we need to set it to 67. So let's just make sure that it's on the, the up and down arrows and not the hand because the hand just pushes it and we'll just change that to 67 there we are and because then they're great. They even come with, uh, a lot of them come with glass cockpits. Um, and the modelling of course, the flight modelling is fantastic. Can't uh, fault that at all. This is another way of looking around by the way, just right click and move the mouse and it sort of moves around. Hmm. That's not very clever was it? Both the engines have packed up. Right, okay, well we'll send out a mayday, mayday, mayday. Golf, whatever our call sign is. Yeah. We're in the middle of the channel, en route to Amsterdam. Double engine failure, intent to ditch in the channel. And, uh, going to do it by the look of it. I'm going to put the nose down slightly. What you have to do is you have to find out what your best glide speed is. And your best glide speed is about uh, 160. I wasn't thinking of doing an emergency landing at the moment. Let's just check the autopilot's off. Because um, we've got a left engine fire and a right engine fire. So we've got a double engine fire. Oh, great. That's just what you need, isn't it? So it looks like we are going down. Oh, now what you don't want to do is stall it while you're. Um, it's not really going to matter. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know how to put engine fires out in this. So I'm still at nine thousand feet. And what I'm trying to do is glide at one hundred and sixty. Believe it or not, if you try and come down at one hundred and twenty, you'll go less far. And if you try and come down at one hundred and eighty, you'll also go less far. Also, we need to think about um, land. Cool, dear me. Can you see any land out there? I oh, bloody can't. Right, so now we'll be giving an instructions to the um, passengers to... We're going to be ditching, so let's have your life jackets on. Now might be a good time to um, show you the rear of the aircraft. The view is... Hmm. Well, there is a view of... Um, over the back of the plane. I just can't find it at the moment. Right. It glides quite well, doesn't it? <clears throat> I don't know what we're gliding for. It doesn't matter what bit of the North Sea we land in. What uh, would be a good idea would be to give them our coordinates, wouldn't it? So. We are 110 miles from Amsterdam on a reciprocal heading 
of 293. So we're on a bearing of 293 from Amsterdam at a distance of 109 miles. There's no point trying to um, avoid going in the sea at this point. When you're ditching in the ocean, you do so with the wheels up and you do so providing the swells not too heavy across the swells. If the swells are massive, then you, you would have to do it down the swell. But uh, you have to do it across, I'm going to do it across the swell. And we said it was a northerly wind, didn't we? So let's just turn left. It's got quite a good failure um, modelling. <laughs> I must have done something to really mess these engines up. I'm sure I've abused them, that's the trouble. I hope they're not on fire, fire. Hmm, they're not looking well, are they? Um, so I'm turning north. Now the other thing I should have done was just feathered the props. And now what's feathering the props? Well, feathering the props is um, making them point straight front to back. Um, and if you do that, then they, they don't drag so much. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm still trying to keep it. You see now, although I'm going down faster, I need to keep this 160 knots up because stretching it to 120 just causes me to go down quicker. There we are. There's the, um, the props feathered. And that's me roughly heading north. And that's where about a minute or two from touchdown now. The other thing you need to do is land slightly nose high because what you want to do is you you want your nose to come down first uh, sorry last so you want to sort of pancake into the water so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take a leaf from the page of old Chesney Sullenberger and try and fly this plane with the <laughs> with the accuracy with which it was built now you don't want to land at 160 knots you glide I'm gliding down at 160 knots but I'm not landing at 160 knots okay I am going to I am going to pull up a bit and what I'm doing is I'm watching this the radar altitude because I'm assuming that is still working it will give me quite accurately my height above the waves Fortunately, it looks flat as a mill pond. Fortunately, I cleared all the weather away. So there we are. So now we're gliding nicely at uh, 160 knots and roughly 2,000 feet. There's an old saying that uh, people in uh, life rafts survive. People in life jackets die in the water, especially in the North Sea this time of year. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll stay with the plane as long as it stays afloat. And then uh, obviously we'll, if we've got a life raft, we'll get into that. There we go. <clears throat> I hope the passenger is as calm as I am. So... I'm looking at the radar altimeter, here we are, we're about 800 feet, 700, 600, so it does look like this is quite accurate, and we've got a good um, good view of the waves, haven't we? This would be a good chance to um, show you the uh, replay feature as well. So, keep it at 160, and what you mustn't do is stall, you can imagine. What I'm going to do now is probably survivable. What um, what wouldn't be survivable would be stalling into the uh, into the sea uh, from about 100 feet. So we'll keep it off, 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 keep it off. I'll put the flaps down because <clears throat> I've had a bit of a splosh there. I'm going to put the flaps down again. It's telling me I haven't got the gear down. Well, that's fine. It's ballooned a bit, which is not that clever. We keep land tail first, tail first, tail first, tail first, tail first, tail first. Wee wee wee. Wee. 
nearly there, 50 miles an hour. Just keeping it straight. There we are. Now it's actually it's good that it's flat as a bell pond, isn't it? What I'm going to do is zoom in here. But no, no I'm not going to put the broken brake on there. I'm going to turn everything off. Probably yeah, more than I should have done, but. What's the point? Right, and <clears throat> we will Ah, oh, now, here we are. Look, here we go. So, now, th this is another way of doing the views, but this is what I'm looking for. We're going to open the passenger door. The other thing you've got to do, of course, um, is uh, look for ships. So when I was gliding along there, what I would have done would be to um, look for any ships. Because if you land in front of a ship, not right in front of it, obviously, because they can't turn and stop very easily. <laughs> it's bad enough landing in the ocean without uh, having to get run over by a super tanker. But basically, if you can see any traffic in the channel, which in the North Sea Channel you certainly would... Um, Basically, you just land by that. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. Oh, no, I was going to do a bit of a replay, wasn't I? Here we go. Aircraft. Sorry about the beeping. I think it's... Um, I don't know if... It's, there's a short circuit, obviously, and the, the water's got in the dashboards. <laughs> Let's... Um, uh, now, you can record an, a movie of that. I could have, should have recorded a movie of that, but... Let's see if I can save the replay. Let's call it Channel Landing. And save the replay. And load the replay. And open it. Now the good thing about the replay, with a movie, which is a, basically saves it as an AVI file, you can play it, and obviously you're making a movie, so you see whatever you recorded. With the replay, it's recorded all the data points, and by all, I mean all, as you can see we're right back here at the beginning. Let's just, uh, let's just, let's go back to when th happier days, when things were going well. And see if I can find out what went wrong. What was I doing wrong? The torque was fine. The turbine temperatures were fine. The prop was fine. All the temperatures and pressures in the Oil pressure is probably on the top end, but fine. Hydraulic fluid low. Hydraulic fluid low. Oh, that would be a good clue, wouldn't it? I wonder, hydraulic fluid is low. Why is that? I may have not got the hydraulic pump switched on. I can't really move the um, yoke out of the way. It's a bit of a pain. There is a, a free camera. And I'm not quite sure how it works. It seems a bit violent, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I think we're going to get very far with that. Why didn't one of you tell you? Why didn't you tell me that the hydraulic fluid was slow? 
Honestly. Anyway, I should imagine that's what that was. Perhaps it's the co-pilot's fault. Oh, I can't see anything to do with hydraulic fluid. Perhaps we didn't fill it up with hydraulic fluid. Perhaps it's the engineer's fault. Perhaps it's anybody's fault but mine. Standby pump. No, it's a fuel pump. I think it's hidden behind there. Anyway. Let's, um... That's that. Let's have a quick look at the landing. Oh. I've landed, so I've got bollards out. <laughs> Can't remove the static elements. Oh well. I've got chocks in and the bollards out some somehow. <laughs> I don't think it'll affect the actual data. You can see the um, props there, can't you? Feathers. This is going to be an expensive repair, I'll tell you that. Assuming it doesn't sink. There's an insurance company at Lloyd's somewhere that's going to be choking on their champagne when they get this news. Yeah, I'm holding it. I'm not doing too bad a job of holding it off. No, I don't believe I put the gear down. You wouldn't normally do that. I might have done. I might have done. I might have done. Instead of the flaps. Flaps definitely went down. But I don't remember putting the gear down. Anyway. I think the, the flatness of the uh, the channel saved us there. Right. I'm going to call it a day. There's not much more I can show you. On this. When I can. I'll do another one. Uh, there's a lot of options though, a lot of options, and it's very slick, believe me, very slick. So, I'm FS Derek, thanks very much for watching, and uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing a few more um, Explain videos in future, and uh, hopefully they're going to end up better than this one did. Well, this one ended fine, you know what they say, any landing's a good landing. Okay, well, everyone survives anyway. <laughs> Alright, come back soon, bye for now.